Hello everyone, John Hutchinson with Traders Reserve. At, uh, just a few minutes before noon here, um, we'll be getting started uh, just to, about the top of the hour. Uh, be a, a minor delay in terms of the audio and uh, video coming through, but uh, should catch up here uh, as we get rolling. Uh, just to get a quick start, uh, the webinar will last about 40 minutes, uh, maybe 45 minutes at the most. Uh, short but very very uh, intense uh, presentation for you. Take notes. Uh, we're giving away a strategy here, um, and actually some really exciting things that we're going to share with you uh, with with a, a, a trading example that actually kind of worked out today. Uh, so uh, as we get rolling here, though, just a, a quick note to, uh, uh, if you would, uh, just uh, I know the sound isn't coming through yet. Um, but it will in just a second, so ha have patience as, uh, as Google catches up with all of us around the world. Um, so as, the, uh, as sound starts to come through, if you would just uh, let me know that you're hearing things okay. I know you're seeing the green button go and not hearing sound yet, but uh, it takes about 60 seconds for the warm-up, so to speak, uh, in terms of the connections, and then everything will be just fine as we start going through the, uh, through the webinar. So that's that. That's one reason why I start up the room a little bit early and then uh, kind of delay before I start. So, um, uh, anyway, sound will catch up here. Anyway, uh, we're, we're, again, we're not going to start for about another uh, two minutes here as, so that people can get into the room and uh, hopefully everybody will be. Uh, all clear and all good on the sound. I have a great guest today. We have some great things to share with you, and uh, we'll be getting started here in just a, just a minute. Great. Thanks, Larry, Linda. Thanks for letting me know the sound is coming through okay. Hopefully, everyone else is doing fine. And uh, so it, it's, it's kind of fun to do these. Uh, you know, all this technology just keeps advancing, and we just have to keep running to catch up with it. But uh, it makes it, certainly makes it more fun to be able to share things uh, such as what we'll be sharing with you today are simple trades with 100 to 300 percent gains. I have, a, uh, again, my guest Jamie DeLugas with me today. I'll be introducing him in just a few minutes and uh, you will probably, we're going to try to make this work uh, correctly. Bear with us a little bit. Uh, this is a new platform that, that we've been testing and uh, when Jamie talks it has to show his screen. When I talk it has to show my screen. Um, so we should stay coordinated on our slides, but if if you if it just bear with it, it may you may have a, a little moment where we have to catch up between the two of us switching back and forth, uh, but it should be okay. Uh, one way or another, we're going to get you through. We've got uh, a great five step step strategy to uh, to show you. So uh, it looks like uh, we are just after the top of the hour, and uh, everybody is in. So welcome, and again, uh, this is. Uh, John Hutchinson with Traders Reserve, and uh, just a, a quick start. We are going to be talking about two key things today. Uh, number one is earnings season, which is upon us, and uh, had a an, a good kickoff yesterday. Um, certainly been a difficult time in the stock market. We don't want to hide from that. But what we're going to share with you today can actually help you to still profit despite the overall volatility in the stock markets. So uh, as we as I get going here, uh, I will uh, we will stick around and answer as many questions as you folks have. Um, so please feel free to ask them and uh, in the in the question box there. And uh, we will get to the Q and A after the presentation. Again, running time is about 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. Presentation will be recorded. You'll automatically be receiving an email link and uh, with a, a link to the replay, I'll also give you that link a little bit later on in this presentation so that you can go watch it uh, within the hour uh, after we wrap up. So if you are an investor or a trader who needs fast growth of a smaller portfolio, wants immediate gains of 100 to 300%, enjoys to go, or likes to go big gain hunting, so to speak, and enjoys sort of turning the tables on Wall Street, uh, as we have some uh, interesting takes for you to walk away with today, um, or even if you just want 19 pole bragging rights with the with your friends on the golf course, then please take notes because we're going to share with you a simple trading strategy that you can use to double your money. And the way that you do this is we're going to show you how to exploit Wall Street's earnings game for those kinds of profits, 100 to 300 percent profits. 
and show you how you can potentially double or triple your money with simple options trades. And the way that you do that is to learn to use earnings manipulation, what we might call earnings manipulation, for potentially fast moving trades. And you can do this in 30 minutes or less. Uh, these are, these are very, uh, very fast trades to get in and get out of. Uh, literally 30 minutes in, out, and done. Uh, in fact, one of our recent members uh, wrote to let us know how successful he had been using the strategy that we're about to teach you. Uh, he said, I was impressed with the strategy. Triple digit gains uh, along with an assortment of double digit winners gave me an overall gain of 40% in just over two months. Uh, that is certainly impressive. Uh, now, obviously, uh, Mr. Nelson's performance may not necessarily reflect your own. We obviously have to include that disclaimer. And, of course, please keep in mind that uh, stock and options trading does involve risk, including the risk to your, to your entire uh, capital uh, invested in any stock or option. So please bear that in mind as we go along. What we're going to be sharing with you today is a specific strategy to use both earnings and weekly options. And we'll explain uh, in, a, in a minute why weekly options, but what this provides you with is very rapid money doubling profit potential. The strategy we're going to teach you is simple, it's repeatable, it is not uh, day trading. Uh, you are not in the markets for a very long period of time, uh, but you'll see why it's not day trading or why it's not classified as day trading because you don't have to watch your screen. Uh, these are, you, you set this trade, once you learn the strategy, you set your trade and then you close it out and you're done. Um, it, it'll be that simple. And we'll explain the mechanics of that here as we go through the presentation as well. And we'll show you some of the, uh, some of the big gains that we have enjoyed by employing this strategy. We're also going to teach you how to use a unique formula uh, to essentially know the direction of a trade before it happens. And it's a, it, we're going to walk you through the steps. You can actually do this on your own. All of the information that you would need to be able to put this together is literally at your fingertips. Uh, it's, it's, it's a mouse click away. The, the, the different, what we're doing that's different for investors or traders such as yourselves is we're teaching you a new way to put that information together to provide you with a potentially strong trading outcome. And we're also going to show you how to use weekly options to maximize that profit potential. And the reason that we use weekly options in this trading strategy is because of their duration. Their short duration works in your favor, and whether, whether we're talking about a put or a call, uh, you, the, the fact that they expire on Friday makes the profit potential that much greater, uh, and the volatility is that much more increased with a weekly option. And then, again, as I said uh, a few minutes ago, we're going to show you an easy plan to be able to get in and out in less than 30 minutes total trading time. Now when you master this strategy, here are four examples of trades that have worked out recently using this exact strategy. Uh, Intel, which missed its earnings expectations, took a huge hit, but a put option trade jumped 157% at the open. Uh, Rock 10, which is uh, more or less an under the radar and little known packaging company, they beat their earnings estimate and a call option gained 249% in just a few hours. They're getting exciting, isn't it? Now, here's Coach. Everybody uh, knows Coach, the luxury retailer. They missed their estimates by what I call the country mile. Uh, the stock dropped 15% at the open, but the put option exploded for a 327% gain. And finally, one of our biggest ever winners using this strategy, uh, Abercrombie & Fitch, they crushed their estimates, and the call option jumped 559% on the same day that the Dow was down substantially. So that's how impressive the strategy will be for you when you learn how to use it and put it into action. You can still make gains despite the overall volatility, despite what's happening in the market at large, because the market still reacts to these types of beats and misses. But the question is, okay, so how do we, how do we know whether a company is going to beat or miss earnings? And that's part of our simple trading strategy, which we're going to teach you right now step by step. And with me on the call today, as uh, always for this particular strategy, is Jamie DeLugish. And uh, Jamie, hopefully you've got your mic open. But uh, Jamie, if you don't know him, he's a 25-year veteran, veteran and investment professional, veteran of the stock market and investment professional. Harbor Financial Digest previously ranked his Rational Investor a number one newsletter. He currently writes for investment websites including Traders Reserve, MSN Money, MarketWatch, TheStreet.com, and others. He's also the author of a forthcoming book called Manipulators, Beating Wall Street at the Earnings Game, which is due out a little bit later this month on Amazon.com. 
and he is one of the foremost authorities on in the, in the investment marketplace on corporate earnings. So, Jamie, if you would, uh, take us through the... Uh, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you start uh, start the, the presentation on your side. Okay. Thank you, John. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. I, I do have my mic on. So uh, if you can just confirm that, I guess, John, that uh, you can hear me. I can hear you. So far, so good. Wonderful. So, um, again, thank you for having me today. I'm, I'm awfully excited to be here. You know, um, it's earnings season. Uh, it kicked off yesterday uh, when uh, Alcoa, after the market closed, uh, re uh, reported their uh, earnings results for the first quarter of 2014. And uh, traditionally, uh, earnings season begins with Alcoa reporting their earnings. Um, you know, a lot of traders are uh, afraid to be in the market around uh, the time a, a company releases its earnings. And for us, uh, it's just the opposite. We are super, super, super excited because the earnings season gives us a chance, uh, one of the, the few chances the small individual investor has to be, uh, quote unquote, using Michael Lewis's book, a flash boy. What's a flash boy? It's a high frequency trader. A high frequency trader that Michael Lewis says rigs the market. I use a different word. I call it manipulation. And and, and it's not in the essence of, of rigging per se, but it's 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 taking advantage of of the way the market operates. And and during earnings season, essentially what you have are conditions that are uh, very similar to what high frequency traders manipulate on on a second by second basis. Now we aren't going to be doing that. We don't have to. We've got this wonderful thing called the earnings reporting event that is something that we can um, uh, leverage and exploit uh, for very large gains as John uh, demonstrated in showing you a few of our examples. Uh, it's no secret most traders hate the earnings season. Companies and an analysts manipulate their numbers. It's very difficult to make heads or tails of what's going on out there in the marketplace. And the media treats earnings like a game, often reporting uh, incorrect results, for example. Um, I, I don't know how, how many times, but uh, every earnings season, uh, I see headlines that misrepresent really you know, what's uh, in the meat of an earnings report. And that results, again, in a, in a, in a trading situation that you can exploit so that an earnings beat can actually mask falling value, an earnings miss can actually signify growth. It's very difficult to make heads or tails of it, but we really love earnings season. And I'm going to show you how you can put extra cash in your account week after week following a very simple system that allows you to become a flash boy and, and your own high frequency trader that can manipulate the market on your terms. Um, so what is the earnings game? Well, Specifically, uncertainty about this event creates volatility, and it's that volatility that we're going to exploit. After earnings are announced, the stock's price can typically move 5 to 10%. Sometimes it moves even more. I've seen examples where a stock will move 20%. Um, using weekly call and put options on the right companies that we're going to trade can generate returns of 100 to 300% more consistently and you're going to have more winners and losers using this approach with five simple steps to find the right companies uh, and, and, and reliably predict outcomes in advance. And that's what's going to give you the advantage. It's, it's using a five-step approach. What are the five steps? Well, which companies, number one, report earnings and have weekly options to start? Number two, we're going to calculate what I call the PE gap to identify under or overvalued companies. Then I apply my unique 4Q formula that basically is an expected outcome analysis that's going to put the probabilities and odds in your favor when making these trades. And every week when I do this analysis, I rank the th top three to five trading opportunities each week based on maximum profit potential. And that's what we give to our subscribers each and every week during this program. Finally, once you have the uh, trading opportunity in your hands, all that's left to do is enter the trade in the last hour before the market closed, before earnings are announced, and we close the trade the very next day. It's that simple. So, in step number one, we identified this week in earnings. What companies are reporting results? Now, 
you can do this on your own at home simply by going to the CBOE website and looking up their schedule of weekly uh, of companies that offer weekly options. And as you can see here on this page, uh, there are approximately 300 companies that release earnings on a, or, or um, I'm sorry, have options that uh, expire on a weekly basis. Those are the contracts that we're going to use to generate our, our um, 100 to 300 percent gains. Next, you're going you're gonna to figure out when do these companies report earnings. Now, if you sign up for the service today, uh, we've, all, we've done all of that work for you. So we've got a, a special report, bonus report, that will give you a list of all of the companies that, that have weekly options and, and more importantly, uh, when they are expected to report earnings. So it's a, a really handy dandy uh, report that you can use to implement step one of our five step process. Next, we calculate the PE gap. What is a PE gap? Well, this is where we identify price to earnings gaps for long and short opportunities. This is going to tell us whether we want to buy a call option or a put option. And a gap occurs between, it's the difference between a PE ratio and the earnings growth rate. So that when we have a PE that is greater than the growth rate, uh, that, that's something we want to avoid. And if the PE is less than the expected growth rate, that's something that we want to exploit. And the wider the gap, the better. Once we um, calculate, or let me show you how to calculate the PE gap specifically using an example here with Alcoa, ticker symbol AA. Now you can go to any financial portal to get this information. Um, I use Yahoo Finance. There are three numbers that you're going to need. First is the current price of the stock. Then you need the current year estimate of earnings that we've underlined here. And then the next year's uh, estimate of earnings. So in the case of Alcoa, we have a current price of $12.63. This is, this is obviously dated before earnings were released, I should add. So this was yesterday's pricing. Um, the current year estimate uh, is a, a loss of 37 cents per share. And the next year estimate uh, I'm sorry, not a loss of 30 cents per share, but it's it's a um, the current year estimate is for a profit of 37 cents a share, and next year's estimate is 60 cents per share. Once you have those three numbers, you're going to do two very quick calculations to calculate the PE gap. First is to calculate the PE ratio, which is simply the current price divided by the current year estimate of earnings. So in this case, you have $12.63 divided by 37 cents to give you $34.14. Then we're going to calculate the earnings growth rate. You take next year's estimate of earnings of 60 cents a share divided by the current year estimate of earnings of 37 cents per share. That gives you 1.62 or 62 percent. Then you subtract the PE ratio from the earnings growth rate to give you a minus 28 PE gap. That's all you need to do. It's that simple. So the quick lesson on PE gaps is that a, if a PE gap is negative, which occurs when the earnings growth rate is higher than the current price to earnings ratio, that's an opportunity for you to trade on the long side. And if the PE gap is positive, which occurs when the earnings growth rate is lower than the current price to earnings ratio, that's a shorting opportunity. And again, these gaps are what tips you off to profit potential. And, and they're, they're very, very powerful tools that you can use, uh, that we use in, in, in trading uh, during earnings season. The next step, once you've calculated the PE gap, is to use what I call the, the, the 4Q uh, formula for, for determining a trading opportunity. Specifically, I, I, I have four expected outcomes so that when you have an, a positive PE gap, you have two possible outcomes during earnings, either an earnings beat or an earnings miss. Same thing with a negative PE gap. You can have an outcome of, the, of an earnings beat or an earnings miss. And so those are the four outcomes I'm going to be analyzing. And when I do this with, with companies that, that offer weekly options and are reporting earnings, I place the company into one of these four quadrants, and that gives me an expected outcome. So specifically, what is the 4Q formula? I'm looking at past performance can be indicative of future performance. So before using the 4Q formula, you need to know a couple things. The frequency of meeting and beating or missing estimates. And that estimates are rising or falling always before earnings. And I'm going to use that information to help me determine whether or not a company is going to uh, beat or miss earnings in that quarter that they are reporting.
So for Alcoa, let's take a closer look at how the 4Q formula works. In the last quarter, Alcoa missed estimates. But over the last four quarters, Alcoa has a 75% beat ratio, including two uh, significantly higher surprise quarters. That, that I would view as being a, a positive. Then I'm looking at earnings revisions in the quarter. So um, for the current quarter of March 30, ending March 31st, we had two upward revisions during the last seven days. We had seven upward revisions over the last 30 days and only one downward revision in the last 30 days. So that tells me that there's some um, positive momentum for Alcoa. You have a combination of a company that, that three out of four quarters is beating analyst estimates and at the same time in the last seven days and in the last 30 days you have analysts that are increasing and therefore feeling uh, very positive about Alcoa's results. So what quadrant do we put Alcoa? Well here's specifically the 4Q formula for identifying how to trade earnings. Again depending on what your PE gap is, whether it's positive or minus, or negative, I'm sorry, is going to tell you which quadrant to, to go in. With a positive PE gap, you have two expected outcomes, uh, either a put or a call option. With a negative PE gap, same thing. You can buy either a put or a call option. So I'm going to start in the upper left-hand quadrant where we have a, um, I, I believe that's a positive PE gap with the 3% or lower premium on the weekly option. We're looking at recent misses in, in, in with respect to its earnings um, performance and a situation where we have falling estimates. So that's going to be our put buying opportunity. The flip side, moving to the right now, in the upper right-hand quadrant, we have a positive PE gap where the weekly uh, option has a 3 to 5% premium uh, to its current value. Uh, current stock price value and a situation where we're looking at rising estimates and recent beats of earnings. We're going to put the stock in that quadrant for a call option. On the negative side, now in the lower left-hand quadrant, where we have a negative PE gap, we call this a value trap. Again, the, the option has only a 3% or lower premium. It has falling estimates. The stock, the company reporting has falling estimates and a history of uh, missing uh, estimates in recent quarters. The flip side, now in the lower right-hand quadrant, with a negative PE gap, we have a 3 to 5 percent premium on the weekly option, rising estimates, and a history of recent earnings beats. So those are your four specific quadrants. Now again, specifically with respect to Alcoa, we would place Alcoa in the first group. Put options, uh, I'm sorry, call that should be call options with a negative PE gap, there's a typo there, I apologize, but look at the pie chart there. It's the call option that we're looking to buy here. Alcoa has a negative PE gap of minus 28. Rising estimates in the last 30 days. Alcoa missed estimates the last time out, but beat estimates in the prior three quarters. So based on the 4Q formula, you would have bought a call option. Now, here's how we trade that call option. On Tuesday, April 8th at 3 p.m., the stock price was $12.54. We wanted to buy a weekly, uh, again, this is a Alcoa call option uh, with a strike price of $12. And the bid at that time uh, yesterday before the close was $0.60. Cents. So that tells me the premium was 5% on this, uh, on this option. Okay. Now, last night Alcoa reported results, earnings of nine cents a share, excluding items, on 5.4 billion dollars in revenue. Analysts expected earnings per share of five cents. So this was an earnings beat, and revenues actually were just slightly lower. But here's the thing: revenues in the last several quarters have been missing on, in a big way. The fact that they are actually that close is is viewed as a positive. And sure enough. What happened to the stock? You can see that today, this morning, at the open, after beating the estimates, Alcoa uh, moved up for a 3% gain. The $12 uh, call option jumped to $1.08 after the first hour of trading for an 80% gain. So within less than 24 hours of making this trade, 
And again, it's a very simple analysis of doing the PE gap, placing the stock in what quadrant, the 4Q formula, and then actually making your trade. And in this case, it was a call option. And you can see that uh, the, the um, trade was very successful. How do you place the trade? How do you follow this program if you sign up? It's very simple. We buy our put or call options, and we're only using uh, straight put buying or straight call buying. Uh, nothing exotic here. We place that trade in the last hour of trading prior to earnings, right before the market closes, and then exit the trade in the next trading session. So if it's a winning trade, we typically let those run and close it in the last hour of trading. If it's a losing trade, we're going to close it, and we do have losing trades. This isn't a fail-safe program, mind you. Um, it's, again, I'm putting probabilities in your favor, and that that's essentially what flash traders do or high-frequency traders do. So it's putting the probabilities of, of an expected outcome in your favor. You are going to have losing trades, and when those happen, we close them within the first two hours of trading, usually by 11.30 uh, Eastern time. Let's look at some specific examples of past trades and how, how, how consistently this formula really does work. And it can be duplicated, and I'll duplicate it for you time and time again each quarter during the uh, earnings season. This is Coach. This was a, a, a trade made in January of 2014. At the time, we had a P.E. ratio of 14, an earnings growth rate of 10, giving us a positive P.E. gap of 4. At the time, uh, estimates for Coach were falling, and it had an unimpressive string of recent earnings reports. So what quadrant do we put Coach? Uh, that would be in the upper left-hand quadrant, then, where we're going to be buying a put option. And sure enough, after Coach reported earnings that disappointed the market, the stock dropped at the open, and our put option exploded to a 327% gain. I think that's pretty powerful. Um, oops. So, um, you uh, you skipped uh, you skipped about something? three slides there. I'm that's, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go back to slide 29. Okay. Am I there yet? One more. Okay, so that was, that was the one you wanted to cover about why we would put the put option on with Coach. Here, this is okay. I yeah, I went. I'm sorry. So so back to how did how, what did we do with Coach? We we identified we calculated the PE gap. We looked at the the earnings history. We looked at where estimates were in in the short term. They were falling. This 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 um, and here are all four quadrants. And and I skipped that chart before. And then I showed you this one where we put the, 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 the trade or coach in the upper left-hand quadrant, which is a put option opportunity. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just getting used to using this uh, Google Hangout uh, and slideshow. Um, and so they missed their estimates, and, and you know, it, 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 the expected outcome became the actual outcome. And in, 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 in essence, that's what happens here. And you can see on the chart what happened to the stock after... Uh, coach reported earnings, and and the gain was 327 percent. So, you know, I I I jumped around there, but I I hope you get the point, which is by by determining the PE gap, first step, then and then placing uh, and determining an expected outcome using the inf readily inf readily available information that anybody can find on any financial portal, you can place. The, the, the potential trade in one of these quadrants. And I do that with every weekly option that's reporting results during the six weeks of our earnings player program. And then I rank all of these, um, again, with a proprietary process that allows me to determine the three to five trades that, that are, are the most promising, and those are the trades that, that, um, um, that we follow. So uh, just some review. Uh, uh, step five, then, is the trade triggers. Uh, one of the things that we do when we implement a trade is that we're buying the options uh, at or in the money. And again, because we're doing this in the last hour of trading before the company re reports its results, uh, that at or in the money trade is going to give you the truest, uh, I guess, in the, in, in the truest sense of, of where this um, trade is going to end up the next day. So that if, if a company misses expectations and we have a put option, I think we're going to get the biggest bang for our buck. Now, you can buy an out-of-the-money uh, put option for sure, 
but you're taking on more risk when you do that. Um, now the flip side is if an out of the money uh, put option comes in for you, that 300% gain that you saw on coach could be even higher. Uh, but we recommend that, that we do at or in the money um, options when we run this program. We're going to enter the trades in the last hour of trading, as I said. That's between 3 and 4 o'clock Eastern time before the company reports. Now, if a company reports after the close, um, you, you're, you're doing the trade as a, on the same day as the earnings report. And some companies report the next day uh, before the market opens. So Alcoa was that way, where they reported after earning or after the market closed on Tuesday. Um, and then once uh, the company reports, you just let the trade run to its conclusion. And if it's a winning trade, we're going to usually let it run throughout the day. And if it's a losing trade, we're going to close it in the next hour of trading. Um, so once again, what are the five steps to being an earnings player? We identify companies with weekly options first. Next, we calculate the PE gap. Then we use the PE gap plus the 4Q formula to identify whether to buy a put or call option. We then amalgamate all of these different uh, options and determine the three to five best trades for the week based on profit potential. And finally, we place the trade. It's that simple. Here's a little history of some of uh, our recent earnings player trade results. Um, again, we're, we're trading recognizable names where most traders avoid these stocks going into the earnings event. But using this process, again, it's about probabilities and expected outcomes. We now can have a better idea of how things are going to work out before they happen. That gives you an opportunity to place a trade that can be exploited. That's what the Flash Boys do. That's what you can do, too, when you're an earnings player. And so you can see the gains uh, anywhere from 147% uh, on Ulta Salon, uh, with the lowest being DuPont, a 58% winner. Um, so I'm going to hand it back over to John. Uh, that's really all I had. And we'll, I'm sure, uh, go over questions and answers, uh, if you have any, um, when we're concluded here. All right, and uh, for those of you who asked, we will go back through some of the uh, previous slides. Hopefully, this my version will be a little bit larger for you uh, as I do that. Uh, we apologize. There was a we discovered this issue as kind of at the last second where we couldn't get a full screen in. So we will try to go back and uh, make the uh, presentation slide a little bit larger for you. Um, but uh, to try to wrap up here in the next 15 minutes, uh, as Jamie said. Uh, this is all part of his earnings player program. Uh, this is essentially an, he's, uh, he acts as an earnings coach. He does all of the work for you in uh, in the mathematics that we basically walked you through. Uh, but uh, you know the the key to to this strategy is it really is not that that hard. It's just it, it's a matter of how much how much do you uh, how much are you willing to sort of like invest a little bit of time with readily available numbers to put together a profitable trade. And uh, what he does now, uh, beginning here again in the in the April quarter, is Jamie has uh, first of all he's he's scaled all of the companies who report earnings down and have weekly options into a six week period. So the the best money-making opportunities are in those six weeks. And those are the six weeks that actually begin starting next week, after Alcoa has sort of kicked off uh, earnings season. So, and then what he does is he goes step by step. He does all, all of the calculations, all of the processes uh, that he's just taught you to identify the best potential trades that you can make in any given week using weekly options for companies that are reporting earnings that particular week. So the program now is called the Earnings Player. Uh, and essentially, here's how it works. It, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's going to begin next Monday, April 14th. And uh, as we said, uh, Jamie makes weekly options trade recommendations. Uh, we we are making those recommendations on large companies, uh, by medium to large size companies. So we're not we're not at risk of uh, companies that have no options liquidity. Uh, we're we're not at risk of um, sort of companies that don't have any options movement in their price. Uh, so we're looking at companies that, that's one of the reasons why we use weekly options is because we know we're going to have liquidity, we know we're going to have volatility, and those are the two things we need in order to get these kinds of results. Um, so there, there are typically going to be between three and five trades each week. Uh, those trades are delivered to you via email. Now, on Monday, Jamie sets up the week with a, a, a 
essentially a, a, an outlook on the week. So here are the companies that I'm looking at, and then you get specific trade alerts during the week, whether you're going to buy a put or buy a call on each of the actual recommendations. So it's, and, and, and as he showed you, you buy the option between, uh, the, between 3 and 4 p.m. on whichever day that, uh, that trade needs to be made, and then you close it out the next morning or the, at the end of the next day. So that's why it's not day trading. You're going to be in these trades for uh, essentially a, over the course of about 24 hours, uh, but it, it doesn't take very long. You, you simply enter the trade and then close it out the next day, it, less than 30 minutes per week. That's how simple we've made this program for you. So uh, this is this is how the actual mechanics of the of the program work. This we call excuse me. This is what we call the green sheet. Now the green sheet is the hot list of companies that Jamie is looking at each individual week. And again, he's doing all the work for you. So he does those PE gap calculations. He does the earnings history review, and then he places those those potential trades into the 4Q formula to identify whether the the probable outcome is a for a put or a call option to be traded. Now the green sheet gets to you every Monday uh, for the next six weeks and then during the week you'll get the actual trade alerts for executing each individual trades. Uh, plus we have another really cool bonus which we'll add on here in just a second. But essentially each day during the week you get that trade alert with the specific options trade instructions to enter the trade between 3 and 4 p.m. and then you'll also get the instructions for closing it out the next day. And then all you have to do is print it off, follow those instructions, and you're ready to profit. It's, we keep it that simple. Now inside the green sheet, this is an example of a recommendation he uh, actually made last year uh, on Groupon. So he's going to give you the fundamental analysis, the technical analysis, the specific trade, and the specific trade de details so you know exactly what to do. Uh, but you also, are, you also know why the trade is being made. Uh, you have more than just a recommendation. You have the fundamentals, you have the technicals that are necessary for the construction of the trade in, in terms of you know, why this company, why did we select, uh, or why, why did Jamie select this particular company. And then of course the actual specific trade execution details will be in there for you as well. That, that's uh, about as simple, but what we, where we get the most comments back is with the earnings player uh, conference line. Uh, this is what we call the member hotline. In addition to the trade alert emails, you also get our daily conference call, which is recorded every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday during the week. You can call into that uh, recording by 11 a.m. Eastern Time. It, in, in that recording, you will either get uh, updates to any existing trade positions, uh, changes, if any, to any upcoming trade positions. So if, if, for example, a trade alert goes out and we want you to put on a trade after 3 o'clock on Tuesday, but something happens to the market first thing in the morning, well, this conference call gives Jamie an opportunity to connect with you directly to tell you go or no go or change or, or instead of a call to a put, et cetera. I mean, it's as simple as possible, but it's up-to-date information every single day during the trading week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, and even from time to time, if he happens to come across a new opportunity, he may also give you instructions on an additional opportunity during the week. And in fact, one of our members, uh, Ted from Iowa, wrote to tell us that he was able to double his money last quarter following the earnings player trades, loved the hotline service, uh, and, and just like us, he can't wait for second quarter to start the new earnings trades. So here are the details. I'll get uh, everyone to a web page. I'm going to turn around and do q and I'll go back to some of the slides uh, so that I can hopefully do them in a little larger format for you. Um, since I, if I'm controlling, I should be okay. Um, but the, again, it, the, the earnings player is six weeks of the green sheet. Uh, that's going to be over 30 trades, uh, 30 or more trades that you can use to potentially double your money. Uh, you're going to get three to five trade recommendations each week. Those will come to you by in individual trade alert emails. You also get access to the earnings player conference line. Uh, again, that's uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 11 a.m. The recording is done, uh, so you can call in any time between 11 and 12 or later and uh, get Jamie's up-to-the-date or up-to-the-minute uh, trade updates. And you also get our little cheat sheets. We'll be putting these out at the beginning of the week, next week, with our first green sheet for the quarter. Uh, this is, this will be, we'll be uh, reviewing the five-step flow chart, uh, which we just walked you through, the, the, so that you learn how to do this yourself. So here's a, an opportunity for you to sort of get coached by Jamie on finding opportunities in the marketplace, but also to learn how to do it yourself. Uh, and then you'll also be getting a bonus Excel spreadsheet 
of all of the companies to follow uh, for April and May. So what we've actually done is we've we've already pulled from the uh, CDOE website all of the companies that have weekly options available and then we've included the earnings reporting date for each of those companies uh, in a simple bonus, uh, bonus spreadsheet here so that you, if you want to continue on using this process uh, after the first week, six weeks are over, you'll actually have a list of companies that you can already start working with for weeks seven, eight, nine, et cetera, for as long as you want. And then you can actually just update that spreadsheet with new earnings reporting dates for future quarters. Uh, and, and much more. So uh, you'll also be eligible to get an advanced copy uh, at no cost of uh, Jimmy's uh, forthcoming book, Manipulators. Again, that's due out later in April. Uh, he's he's uh, rewriting it to sort of take on some of Michael Lewis's HFT, Flash Boys uh, take on the markets, as he talked about uh, at the top here, uh, dealing more with the manipulation of the markets, specifically as it relates to earnings, earnings numbers, and how companies uh, report, etc. So it's going to be a very, very fascinating book, but you'll also be able to walk away with more in-depth strategies for taking advantage of that manipulation in the marketplace, particularly around earnings time. So uh, again, I'm going to, uh, one, one last uh, testimonial we, we received uh, with uh, three trades there, up 200, 100, and 150%. Uh, we'd love to have people coming back, but uh, you know, this may be your first time. Uh, this may not be your first time, but we wanted you to learn how the process works. And again, you, this is a, a very simple execution, very simple trades. You, again, you're only in them for about 24 hours. Uh, there's going to be a deadline, though, of Sunday, April 13th, uh, midnight Sunday. Again, that's because the first green sheet is going to go out on Monday, April 14th. Uh, to get in, and I'll put this in the chat box, you can make your reservation right now at traders, tradersreserve.com forward slash earnings and there's just a big yellow join now button now the replay of this webinar will also be posted on that web page so if you missed anything if you want to go back to watch it again uh, just keep your eye on that page uh, for probably be sometime in the next hour or so we will have the the replay up on that page hopefully you can full screen so you get a better view of all of the slides uh, and I'll uh, try to remember to uh, also include uh, a download so if you want to follow through the PDF version of the presentation uh, that may help many people who couldn't see Jimmy's screen. Again, we apologize for that uh, new technology and we're still trying to wrap our own brains around it, but it's a, you get the full six weeks of, of Jamie's trades, uh, again, three to five trades per week, 30 or more trades for the whole quarter, uh, it's $179 for the quarter, uh, and all of the coaching that goes along with it, the conference line, the weekly green sheet, the trade alert emails, uh, everything that you need to be able to pull in the gains just like we've shown you in here in this presentation. So uh, I want to take uh, a second to get back to some of the earlier slides. Uh, so give me just a second to back up and I will go back through them. Um, if you want, uh, there's the link right there in the admin notice box in the chat so that you can just uh, switch right over. Um, or you can also just uh, hop right over to the with the Get Started Now button here in the pop-in to grab your own, uh, your own seat. Again, the deadline is going to be Sunday. Uh, but I want to make sure that everybody gets. So I want to make sure that everybody gets in as soon as possible. And Jamie, before I bring you back in, I want to go back and uh, pick up on it for a, a couple of folks who missed some things earlier uh, here in the presentation. Uh, one of them was about the original this slide here. Um, so let's see, Jamie, can you see, is that full screen uh, on your end? No, now I'm. Uh, I, I get your lovely mug. <laughs> All right, that's what I thought. <laughs> Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try again. Yeah, that's the that's what happens when you when you switch from a PC to a Mac and things just don't work the way you want them to. So let's do that and see if we can go slideshow. Well, John, while you're doing that, uh, I'm just glancing at some of the questions, and I'll try to answer some of these as they come. Steve's asking about the intrinsic value of the option and whether that fact factors in. 
Absolutely, that's uh, I use the intrinsic value to uh, uh, to calculate the premium on the option. If if a premium uh, is uh, you know greater than say five percent, for example, um, you know you're going to have to have a really big move in the in the underlying stock to capture any profits in an option trade. And sometimes that happens. Uh, you might find a, an excellent, from a fundamental standpoint, excellent reason to trade a stock, uh, but um, if, if the premium on the option is too great, um, you know, you're, you're going to, you know, it, it just, it, the odds of, again, this is all about odds, and the odds of you capturing that gain are, are lower. So, um, but yes, you know, we, we, I factor in intrinsic value into, into the analysis. So is, uh, as I talk again, is my screen returned, or am I still on? The you're still screen? on dark screen. All right, hang on. And then I suppose when I talk, uh, is my screen popping up on your end? You should be fine. Okay. All right, how's that? That's Now I got you. Is that a larger slide, full screen slide? It is not. It's just showing up in my box. <laughs> yes, well... And I'm not, I have no idea what uh, these folks are seeing, so... Uh, I'm assuming That's it's all right. yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do it in a full screen uh, replay at some point. So uh, one of the questions that had been asked was to return to the uh, gains from the original slide. Um, and uh, this was that slide. Uh, Intel, uh, the put option was up 157%. Uh, Rock 10, the call option up 249%. Coach, put option, 327% gain and Abercrombie and Fitch a 559% gain on the call option. Uh, let's see, I need to go down to the next slide after this. Hopefully this is a little bit bigger for folks. Um, this was the, uh, the PE gap slide, just to return to it, and essentially what you're using here, it, what, you're, what you're doing is it, identifying companies that are either at the present time undervalued or overvalued, and that impacts the the how you place them in the in the 4Q formula. Because if you have an overvalued company that's missing estimates or that continues to miss es estimates, um, that's going to be a company that sells off. If you have an undervalued company that's routinely beating estimates, uh, that's a company that's going to have an opportunity for a, a sky sort of the skyrocketing stock price. Uh, so that's why this, this one step is, is so important. Now we use the PE gap in, so, in, in one of our other programs in a completely different way, but the, the core here is to find those companies that have that potential for you. So the way you calculate the PE gap first is simply to determine the PE ratio, uh, and that's by taking the current price divided by the current year's earnings, and uh, that was an example here on the analyst estimate, estimate page from Yahoo Finance. Uh, where you would divide the price at the time that I took this screenshot yes, yesterday. I think I did this yesterday, two days ago. Um, 37 cents is the current year earnings, so 12.63 divided by 37 cents gives you a PE of 34, and then the earnings growth rate is simply dividing next year's earnings by this year's earnings. So in this case, it was 60 cents divided by 37. You drop the one, uh, so 62% or or whole number 62, and then we simply subtract those two numbers from one from the other so that we get a, sort of a, a, a view of the distance between their current valuation and their growth valuation, if you will. And that's how Jamie's using the PE gap as one of the core mechanisms to identify companies that have the potential for these money doubling gains. Uh, moving up to the uh, next slide, sorry. Oh, we're having all kinds of fun today. <laughs> There we are. This, I wanted to go back to this slide. You know, one of the things that was important about the uh, recent earnings beats and misses, uh, the, the surprise percentage is um, it, you have to take it with a grain of salt. And the reason is, if you look at that last quarter, the the 33 percent would the miss by 33 percent would look really really bad. Except the the fact of the matter is it was they were supposed to earn six pennies and they earned four pennies. 
So you have to sort of like, you, the one aspect of this is looking at how much are they missing by, you know, I would discount the June and December quarters for Alcoa because those are essentially inline estimates. Uh, you've got a, a penny beat and a, and a two penny miss. Uh, that's not necessarily substantial. Three cents starts to get a little bit better, but the, the September quarter was really the big quarter for them. That was a huge surprise. They weren't expected to, uh, to perform anywhere near as well as they did, and they were replicated that quarter, uh, that September quarter here in the, the recent earnings uh, with another, uh, I think it was another four cent beat um, over their current estimate. So that's, you know, this is, when you put this together, it's, it's, you might think at first, boy, this is really hard, I can't do this, but it really is easy. And as a member, you're going to learn step by step as Jamie starts to teach you uh, each quarter how to actually find these kinds of trades, but he's going to do all the work for you first. But once you get this down, I mean, Jamie, you know, this is what, maybe a, a 10 or 15 minute process once you know, uh, once you narrow all those companies down to the ones that have weekly options uh, on a given week, you're only looking at probably five to 10 companies per week. Is that right? Uh, it's about 50 companies a week uh, because one, one little subtle um, thing on the weekly options is that uh, we get to use the monthly expiring options twice during the quarter. So on average, it, it ends up being about 50 companies that we're looking at. Yep. And uh, let's, uh, Dave asked, are the earnings hotline conference calls on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday recorded? Yes, they're, they are recorded for you first. Uh, so what Jamie does is he calls in, he records his, his hotline call, and then you get an access code to dial in and listen to the recording. So they're not live calls, uh, they're pre-recorded for you so that you can dial in anytime after 11 a.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to pick up the recording. Uh, scroll back down here, I see. How do you calculate the PE gap for companies where current year estimates are negative and next year's earnings are positive? Jamie? Yep. Uh, excellent question. Uh, that, that, uh, that situation can and does occur. Um, and again, when, when, that, when that happens, uh, your math, start, uh, your math uh, becomes invalid. So um, typically, uh, because I'm looking at so many companies, when I see a company that's going from negative to positive, um, it doesn't mean one, one thing or another with respect to my opinion of that company, but in terms of giving me the crystal ball insights into expected outcomes, I start to lose confidence in the data that I'm analyzing in that situation, and so I just skip it, if that, if that makes sense. Um, so um, it, it, it's, you know, when companies are going from negative to positive, uh, while that happens, it doesn't happen very often, and so, you know, if I'm analyzing 50 companies a week and two or three of them are in that situation, I, you know, I, I just let it go because I'll, I'll find opportunities elsewhere. <coughs> there was also a question earlier on that I wanted to get to. I think somebody asked about coach and what does it mean that coach is in a non-dynamic industry, and I think uh, that concept of dynamic dynamism versus non-dynamism is is important, and I can explain it best by by giving you this example. I would say Tesla, for example, the electric car, that's in a dynamic, very fast-growing industry. Procter and Gamble, toothpaste, dry goods, etc., um, uh, sundry items. That's a non-dynamic industry. If Procter Gamble has a valuation like Tesla that would be a screaming sell opportunity, don't you think? Why would you want to buy a company that really can't grow its earnings very much? You don't. You buy Procter & Gamble for its cash flow, for its dividend. And so if for some odd reason the market was screwy and Procter and & Gamble, and, that, and this does actually happen, by the way. I mean, now, Procter & Gamble won't have a valuation like Tesla ever, but it could have a valuation that is excessive and coincidentally, the last couple of years, because a lot of investors have been looking for yields, they have been buying stocks like Procter & Gamble, therefore bidding up the price uh, above what Procter & Gamble really should typically trade for in the market. And so, you know, PE gap can, can, can help you sniff out these, these valuation uh, um, situations 
Uh, but 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 then it's the added analysis of saying, look, it's okay to it's okay that te you know Tesla trade and Amazon, for example, and Netflix trade for these. Not so much the last few weeks. I get that, but it you know in our in our terms, we're not looking at long term. We're looking at a very short term event, um, and and it's okay in the world of earnings to have a very expensive company, but if it's in a dynamic industry. It can still generate significant profits on the upside, and so therefore it's a call buying opportunity. Whereas Procter and Gamble and and Coach, Coach is not a, a in a dynamic. I mean, handbags are handbags, and you know what? They're getting they're getting beat in the market by Michael Coors. So at that particular moment in time, when we're looking at Coach, they're at a distinct disadvantage in the marketplace, and yet the market was assigning a premium valuation. So that's part of the analysis that I do in the 4Q formula in placing a stock in a particular quadrant. And then once I have all of the stocks in the particular quadrant um, of my 50 trades, let's just say, let's just say I'm doing 40 trades, so it's easy for the math. And I've got 10 trades in each of the four quadrants. Then I can look at other things like, you know, <clears throat> one of the interesting things about Alcoa is not only was it a call buying opportunity, but you have a market that is incredibly oversold at the moment. Um, and so uh, the last two or three quarters, the biggest gains have come from the put buying side of things. That's going to switch in starting with this quarter. And, and it has switched. So you've got Alcoa, uh, you know, that, that, that's another feather in Alcoa's cap and, and puts it squarely in the call buying quadrant. And, and, and um, so, so this this program is is it's it's again it's not fail safe. I mean, and when you have losers, uh, you know you should know that that and and you should know trading options entails a high de degree of risk. This should be your you know your fund money you know that that you're looking to generate these significant gains on. Um, but the nice uh, nice thing about this is if <clears throat> if you're wrong on your trade, you're going to lose anywhere between fifty and hundred percent. Now that's that might sound like a lot. Even if you lose 100%, wow, that's a hor, hor No, it's not so horrible. Not in terms of if I've got four trades in the week that generate on average 300% and one trade that loses 100%, I'm way ahead of the game. Um, and so um, it's not fail safe, but by having the odds in your favor, you can you can really um, you know with your fun money have a lot of fun. Jamie, let me uh, just drop this up for a Abby. Uh, asked for um, uh, lost her question uh, BBBY and FDO. So Abby, we'll do. Let's do a just a quick live uh, example with uh, with uh, Bed Bath and Beyond here. Hopefully the the numbers there are big enough for everyone to see. Um, so essentially, and I I can't double screen and show you like the sort of the map. Well, maybe I can. Let me try and bring the calculator up. I don't know if it'll show. Uh, no, it won't. Okay, so well, we'll do the math for you here, uh, kind of live, and you can follow along. Uh, remember, our first step here is calculating the PE gap. So we need to know what the price-to-earnings ratio is. Uh, and I'm just going to use the existing price right there, 67.75, divided by the current year's earnings, which on that screen is $4.80. So a quick look at that tells us we've got a P-E ratio of uh, 14 in the current year. Uh, and then the next step is the earnings growth rate, which is $5.27 divided by that same $4.80. And that gives us a 9.8% growth rate. So uh, we had a 14 P-E and an, essentially a 9 earnings growth rate. So when you subtract those, that's going to give you a positive PE gap, so a plus PE gap. So uh, that's that's sort of that was sort of step one, and then step two here is well, I want to show you this because I think this is pretty compelling. Um, here's you should be able to see now the earnings history, and very much like Coach, uh, they're they're unimpressive. Uh, they 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 meet estimates. Uh, they missed estimates in the last quarter. Uh, you know their biggest beat was by a penny. So this is this is not a company that is they they're they're making what they expect, which means that they're in line with their earnings growth rate. So is this a growing company? Not necessarily. 
exactly. Uh, this, is, this is a company that that is kind of like those those non one of those non dynamic companies. Um, so just from I mean, we're not necessarily constructing a trade here, but uh, Jamie, this would this would more more than likely fit in one of your put option categories just from that rough estimate there. Uh, concur. Um, you know it, the PE gap. Uh, uh, you start with that with a positive PE gap, and so now I've got uh, it narrowed down to a put buying opportunity or a call buying opportunity. And as you stated, uh, the results, uh, you know, for a premium valuation, I'm going to look for earning surprises on the plus side of at least 10% or more. And here, you know, they they match, they match, they beat by a penny, and then, you know, more worrisome is they missed in the last quarter uh, by three cents a share, and. Um, you know, downward revisions in the last uh, 90 days. The estimate was for the company to make a dollar 68, and they're go only going to make, you know, expected to make a dollar 60. So, you know, it, all of these little uh, signals tell you that uh, indeed this would be a, a put in the the, the uh, fourth quadrant or or a positive PE gap with a put buying opportunity. And uh, even more so, uh, considering their next quarter is slated for a dollar two, so they're actually supposed to make fifty-eight cents less next quarter than they're they're projected to make for the current quarter. Uh, so there, there you go, Abby. Uh, just that that's that's not necessarily a trade recommendation, but that would be how we would start to construct the the potential for a trade recommendation, which would be moving along the exactly that process. So. We sort of we did the the quick math with the PE gap. Uh, we did the a quick look at the earnings history, and then you know, just understanding what that company does uh, and the fact that they don't have significant growth potential. Uh, you likely have a company which, when they do report earnings, um, if those earnings are at or below estimates, uh, this company is most likely going to be you know, not necessarily going to go down 10 or 20 percent in the stock price, but your your best play is probably with a put option uh, so far based on based on that information. So I uh, hope that helped everybody sort of like get a, a quick flavor for how we do this. Uh, Wasim Wasim based in London. Uh, those conference calls are available uh, and they they stay available. So they, even if you miss uh, or can't call into Tuesday's call until later in the day or in the evening hours, uh, it's still available. Uh, it's I. They remain available through the week, so we don't take them down until the end of the week. Uh, so for anyone who needs to call in, you can straight uh, all the way through. Um, we should we should double check that, John, because I know I I I'm, I'm wondering if I um, when I record the next day, do we lose the one I recorded previously? And we might. Um, I'm not sure if they're archived uh, like you described. But at a minimum, they're recorded in the morning, and then they're they're live throughout the day and the night until the next day, for Abby, sure. I'm looking into that right now, Abby, on if there's a, an issue with the, uh, it shouldn't be an issue with the sign-up page, but give me just a second to double-check that. And while you're doing that, I'll answer RB's question, why only five companies uh, out of 50 earnings, others don't work well? No, no, actually, um, you know, um, it, it's, it's more of a function of, you know, not everybody can trade all of the, the all of the companies, and so you know what 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 we tend to focus on are 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 what our we would label as our favorite opportunities. Um, you know, we may down the road, you know, offer more trades as a premium, um, but you know, it it it, um, um, it has it it hasn't it does nothing has nothing to do with whether or not they work well. It's just more of a function of you know. It's, it starts to get unwieldy uh, for us to track, and and you know we have a fairly large uh, subscriber base that that's following all of these trades, and so it, it starts to get a little bit. You know, it might sound crazy, but it does get confusing to people when you start giving them too much information, and so we really try to keep it simple and and limit it to the five trades. Keep talking. Okay, I just so, fixed that page. Here's the uh, here's the direct link. Uh, Abby, I just fixed that page. There was uh, there was an overlay. I uh, I apologize. So uh, let me let's try again. Remove and 
There we go. Uh, that'll take you directly to the the, the fixed order page. Uh, there, yeah, there was a, another component that apparently was there that was blocking uh, the name entry. So should be fixed now, and uh, should be able to enter your uh, information to sign up. Appreciate that. Look forward to having you. And uh, Jamie, what else? Uh, what Dwayne, other questions Dwayne do we was, have? Dwayne was, Dwayne was asking what percent of the option trades are successful, and you know the, the hit ratio using this formula. Um, you know, my my goal is to have 60% winners, 40% losers. Uh, I typically run anywhere between 65 and 70% each earnings quarter. Um, so uh, it, you 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 tend to have more w winners than losers, and your winners win a lot more than your losers lose. And so that's that's how uh, you know we gave you the testimonials. You know, people uh, can make money doing this program, and that's. Ultimately, the point, right? We want you to make money. Hey, Jamie, I have uh, I have a quick question. This just came in uh, private to admin. Uh, how do you think Wall Street is going to treat companies who essentially lean on the weather factor? Hmm. Uh, well, let me make sure I understand. Lean on uh, companies uh, that are going to use weather as an excuse for why they missed earnings. Sure. sure. Um. You know, it 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 that that that's a risk uh, during this current earnings season, and that needs to be factored into how we analyze things. Um, you know, what what I what I think I can I can safely assume is that the analysts have already factored that into their earnings estimates, and so in some ways, it, you know, it's already factored in. Now, if a company decide, you know. I'll give you an example. We've seen airline stocks are getting hit r really hard. Um, you know, the headlines have been about biotech and technology shares, but um, the selling in some of the airline stocks has been pretty severe as well recently. And part of that is uh, companies like American Airlines and United Airlines are coming out with their um, March um, operating numbers and where there was a definitive impact on their numbers by the weather. Uh, when American Airlines released that data, the market initially sent the shares lower by three or four percent, um, but but they rallied in the day. And the reason they rallied in the day is this weather event was a it's a short term deal, and it's something that's in the past. It's almost like um, one time events if you're an accountant, you know, special items uh, if you're an accountant. In other words, it's not going to be recurring. Um, it's a risk. Weather can always be a risk for an airline company. But the numbers, the fundamentals, and that's really what, what we're driving at here is the fundamentals with airline stocks are so good and so attractive, and the valuations are so low, and, not, and with this selling, they've gotten you know, ridiculously low that, that, that there are some really great earnings trading opportunities with airline stocks if you... Um, you know, we're able to pick up uh, how I use the PE gap and the the four Q formula. You know, you can go look at airline stocks this afternoon, and you're going to see. Um, I would I would venture to say 90% of them trading with negative PE gaps and showing um, other variables that would put it in the uh, negative PE gap uh, call buying option, uh, uh, the lower right hand quadrant of the four Q formula. Um, where there are going to be some really neat call buying opportunities in airline stocks. So, uh, long story short, weather, you know, there is a risk that companies are going to lean on weather uh, for sure, but, but um, uh, know that both the market and my analysis factor that into to how we identify trading opportunities. And uh, Walter, there is not necessarily a minimum account size. I uh, really need as long as you're able to trade options, uh, you can trade one or more option contracts uh, per recommendation. The, the recommendations that get made are on liquid options, so uh, the they're always accessible. Uh, and we're, we typically stay away from wide spreads uh, between bid and ask, so you're, you get a decent price or gain. The the objective is to get a decent price. Um, and then uh, RB says, would you say there are more put buys in your method versus call trades? And really, that depends on the quarter. 
we may see more put buys uh, this quarter simply because of the expectations, like we, as we were just talking about. No, 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 uh, no, no. Other way, other way around. We're going to see more call buying. Uh, last oh, quarter, so? quarter before we saw the put buying. This quarter, it's going to be all about call buying. All right. I, I thought we were going to hit more call, uh, more puts this quarter, but <laughs> sorry, nope. You're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, uh, the uh, earning, tradersreserve.com forward slash earnings. Uh, I'll throw that up one last time as we get ready to close down here. Um, the replay will be going on uh, that same web page, uh, and I should be able to post that up here in the next hour. We are doing this again tomorrow at 2.30, so if you uh, happen to come, you know, happen to have questions overnight, uh, feel free to come back and join us again tomorrow. Hopefully, we can get the uh, screen sizing issue fixed by then. Uh, one way or another, we will. But um, and then we'll do a new recording at the same time. So, uh, so RB, RB quickly. Uh, Abercrombie and Fitch was a 560 percent gainer. That, that, was our, yeah, that was our largest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so there we go. Uh, TradersReserve.com forward slash earnings. Join now. Uh, deadline's going to be Sunday, and the replay will be up probably in the next hour or less. And uh, Jamie, I thank you for taking time to join me today. We did that in just over an hour, which I think is uh, pretty good. Uh, Great. Thanks, again, John. we look forward to having everybody in, and uh, we will see everyone very, more, very soon. Thanks for taking your time. Thanks for all your great questions, and uh, look forward to earnings season kicking off next week. Thanks, guys. Hope to see you in the program.